Hello, everybody. This is Joe from the F Stops here. Thank you for joining me today. And today we're going to be going through the way I lay out the buttons on a Sony A7R. Here we go. <laughs> So today we're talking about button layouts and button mapping, as it's called. And this is what the buttons do uh, when shooting with your camera. Now I'm going to be using an A7R 4 You can uh, use a similar button layout, of course, for an A7R 3 or an A7 Mark III. A7C, to a certain extent, it does have fewer buttons. Uh, and I find this to be a useful way of setting up any of these cameras. Um, as always, everything we do here is brought to you by the F-Stops here. And we're we're all about photo education. So we're the author of three books on the iBook store. We have the uh, popular photography cheat sheets teaching photographic skills. Uh, and we have a free introduction to photography course right here on YouTube if you check out the channel. Lots of good stuff. I hope that you take a look at everything that we have. So let's get into this. Uh, I'm going to be going through the way I lay out what's called the custom key setup, and this is just button mapping. And I'm going to be going through it in the picture taking or stills uh, operation because for video operation, I actually leave just about every button to be mapped exactly the same uh, as it is in stills production. And I'll be looking at uh, video production and in the playback uh, buttons in later videos. So uh, I just want to tell you how I kind of lay this out. So we're right here in the custom operation menu. This is uh, camera. Uh, submenu 2 and we're on page 9 if you're in an A7R4 this might be on a different page with different cameras but it's right there labeled custom key and so I want to take a look at the way that we lay out this button and with the newer um, uh, menu they actually give you this little diagram of the camera so you can see what it is that we're talking about now this very first uh, one number one says not set and you'll notice it's highlighting the back wheel I used to have this set to changing ISO I did that for actually a number of years because I found it very useful to have a quick uh, wheel that I could turn to change ISO and I had my front dial for my shutter speed my rear dial for my aperture and then I had something for ISO and it was very quick to do manual exposure change however I can kept accidentally moving the wheel. And so because of that, I ended up turning this off and just allowed a button to get me to doing ISO changes. And that was just because I kept hitting the wheel. So if you're going to use this for something, then I really find ISO to be a very useful thing here, but I actually have it turned off. So uh, that's, that's kind of my experience with it. You're actually going to see that I have a couple of buttons that I have not mapped. Uh, and there's reasons for that. So this button number two I have set as pixel shift. Now if I was to need a button that I could remap to something else that would be more useful it would be this one. Pixel shift I have in here just because I've used it only every now and then but I really don't need um, another thing inside of my direct buttonology. Uh, this is a good time to mention that this is going to be part of a two-part series. Uh, in the next video I'll talk about the way I lay out a, uh, a function menu and that's a key component to what you want to lay out your buttons for so anyway pixel shift is just that really high resolution uh, still capture that the a7r series can do uh, next on our list is going to be button number three this is labeled AF on on the back of your camera and uh, I leave this mapped exactly as it is out of factory, and that is to be able to focus because I am a back button focus shooter, and so I find it uh, to be the most convenient place to have my focusing button. And a little rule that I have with button mapping is if a button is labeled for something, I do tend to leave it for what it's labeled as. That's just been useful for me. And so the AF on button I have left. Uh, silent shooting is actually my button number four. This is called the C3 button, by the way, on an A7R4. Uh, turning silent shooting on and off. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I actually have silent shooting also mapped inside of my My Menu tab. Uh, just because if I'm changing a couple things really quickly, this might be one of them, but I also have it set up as a direct button. I find that to be useful. I don't want to have silent shooting turned on uh, if I'm under 
uh, fluorescent lights that might band or if I might be incurring rolling shutter. So uh, number five is this bottom right hand button. This is actually labeled on the camera as C4 and it turns the touch operation on and off. Now you can touch on the most recent uh, Sony cameras to move the focusing crosshair and this turns that feature on and off. I tend to leave it on but sometimes I do want to switch that around. Okay, so take a look here. This is button number one, which is actually the uh, control pad, right? This is that, that textured button that allows for navigation, the joystick, some people call it. I have the button turned off, and again, it's because I used the joystick to move my crosshair, uh, and I kept accidentally pressing the button when I just wanted to move the joystick, and so I have turned that button off uh, just so that the joystick won't interfere with operation. Now, uh, if you know me and if you know the way that I really like to talk about focusing systems, I think one of the most powerful settings that you can change in the focusing system of a Sony camera is the tracking sensitivity. I talk about it in other videos, but this is how sensitive it is to switching subjects uh, when you are tracking. Very, very powerful control. I do like to have it very prominently placed, so it is my center button. It was a long time shooting the Sony cameras when I had uh, eyeball autofocus as my center button, but I ended up, of course, taking that away as soon as it became built into face detection. So that's no longer necessary for me. Now, these next three buttons, you're going to notice um, that I have them as very, very normal, everyday things to change. In fact, these first two, drive mode and ISO, which is going to be the left and right uh, buttons on the control wheel, are the way that the camera's labeled out of the box. Um, I change drive mode all the time, and of course, I do need a direct button to be able to change ISO, and so uh, having that set up on the wheel is a very convenient place. Um, another very normal, everyday thing that I change is going to be white balance, and so that's the bottom part of the wheel. I made the wheel these very common things to change because it's an easy and fast uh, set of buttons that I can get to quickly with my thumb, and so I'm changing these all the time. When you get to my function menu video, what you're going to find is that I have removed all of these from the function menu. I have another rule where I don't like to duplicate things unless I've got a good reason for it. And so I've taken drive mode, ISO, and white balance out of my function menu, and, then, and I've given them prominent uh, place on my buttonology. So that's the way I kind of think through that. Very, very powerful stuff. Now, the top two buttons, what are labeled C1 and C2 on the camera, I have set as my major focusing options, focus mode and focus area. Um, these are things that I change all the time. I want to have direct and easy access to them. I don't want to dig into a function menu for them. God forbid I go into the actual menu for them. And so I like to have these grouped together. I don't understand having these two things as buttons and separating them. So this, the top of the camera is my focusing uh, uh, kind of uh, control center, if you will. I've got both of them right next to each other, easy to be able to adjust. And lastly, uh, we're going to get to here. When you have a lens uh, that has its own uh, uh, customizable button, uh, that's a programmable thing. But most of my lenses don't have that. I have maybe two lenses that actually have the uh, customizable button. So I can't label that button or map it as something that I would use in every shoot, but something that might be convenient. So I put uh, the eye switching, from right to left eye switching as that button. Uh, the primary lens that I own that I that has uh, the customizable button is my 135G Master, and that is a portrait lens. And so having this set up as a portraiture feature, right, you know, the eye switching, is a very useful thing for me. Uh, and, but if I don't have a lens that has that button, I'm not going to lose out on a major piece of functionality. So that's the way I think through that. I've met people who have this button set up as their AF on button, but then you'd have to know that every lens that you shoot with uh, would have that. And some people have that, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. So anyway, that's the way that I lay out my buttons on an A7R4, and if I use a different Sony camera, it's the way that I would map the buttons for that as well. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you and been useful for you, um, and thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.